subtraction of two digit numbers with borrowing subtraction of two digit numbers with borrowing you have some examples here so let's take example one we have 41 minus 13. usually whenever we have two digit number we arrange it on the tens and units so I arrange tens and unit t stand for tens and use them for units okay so I already in 41 I have four tens one unit four tens one unit minus 13 is one ten three units one ten three units the arrangement must be perfect the way we arrange is very important now we start the subtraction from the unit side okay in unit I have one, three. One minus three. One minus three. If I have to count one and take away three, it is impossible. Why? One is smaller than three. What do I need to do? I will come to this test, this four in test, I will borrow. Whenever there is a small number up and there is a bigger number down, what you need to do is to borrow. For you to be able to subtract it. So I'll come to this place. I'll borrow. Borrow one. I'll bring it here. This one becomes 11. Now look at this 4. I have borrowed there. It will not be 4 again. Since I borrow, I have 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. From that 4, I borrow 1. I borrow this. It will remain 1, 2, 3. So this one remains 3. Okay? Why do I have 3? Because I borrow 1 there. So I will not count. Count 11, take away 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They will take away 3. 1, 2, 3. Count the remaining 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Therefore, 11 minus 3 will give me 8. Go to the next one. You know, I told you earlier that this one will not be 4 again because we have borrowed there. It will be 3. 3 take away 1. 1, 2, 3. Take 1 away. 1. Count the remaining 1. 1, 2. So therefore, 41 minus 30 will give me 28. 2. I have 83 minus 24. 83 take away 24. So I told you before now that you arrange under tens and units. In 83, I have 8 tenths, 3 units. 8 tenths, 3 units. Minus 24. 2 tenths, 4 units. 2 will go under tenths and 4 will go under units. Then I start doing the subtraction. Now, 3 take away 4. It is impossible. Why? 3 is smaller than 4. It is impossible. So what do we need to do? We we'll borrow. We we'll go to tenths and borrow from 8. Okay, I'll borrow one here, I'll bring it here. This becomes 13. Now look at 8. I've borrowed one there. When I borrow one from A, when you borrow one from a number, it means it's just as if you are counting backward. The number before 8 is 7. So if I borrow one from 8, it will remain 7. Okay? So therefore, I'll count 13, take away 4, count 7, take away 2. I get my correct answer. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've counted this 13. I'll take away 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Count the remaining 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 13 minus 4 gives 9. Then I'll come to 10. I'll count 7. Take away 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then take away 2. 1, 2. Count the remaining 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I write 5. So, 83 minus 24 will give me 59. Example 3. 60 minus 32. 60 take away 32. We'll go ahead to arrange. Tens and units. So, I have 60 minus. Don't forget, 6 tens, 0 unit. That's why I have my 6 under tens. And I have my zero under unit. So 32, 3 tenths, 2 units. 3 tenths, 2, 2 units. 2 units. Then I rule it. 
zero take away two is impossible. I cannot count to zero and take away two from here. Okay, I will borrow. Come to this six to borrow. I put here. This becomes ten. Now this is six. I borrow one. The number before six is what five. So that is six minus one. Give me five because I borrow one there. It will not be six again. So I'll count ten. Take away two. Count five. Take away three. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then take away two. One, two. Count the remaining one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So ten take away two. Give me eight. Now come to ten. Count five. Take away three. One, two, three, four, five. I take away three. One, two, three. Count the remaining one. One, two. So I have my two. Sixty minus thirty-two will give me twenty-eight.